well, I don't have a fancy recording studio, so this will have to do. Hi everyone, welcome back to a prediction video. The Euros are just a bit more than a week away and everyone's doing a video, so I thought, why not do it as well? I won't be covering a Euro match unless you know, someone rich wants to sponsor me last minute. Now, I'm not a fan of national team football. However, I am going to watch all the games. So if you're around Mariaska or Voda Beach Bar here in Katowice, uh, and you see me, join me. Let's start this prediction. I'm going to predict the group stage and then we'll do another video for the playoffs. And if you want to see me do a prediction video for the new season of the Extra Class and Fortuna Liga, just let me know down below and uh, maybe we can make it happen. So we start off with Group A, in which we see the host nation Germany, group winners Hungary and Scotland and Switzerland. So let's kick it off. Group A. And I personally think that this group will be the one with the most surprises in it, uh, because I can see any team changing the order. I have Scotland in fourth, but they could easily finish second. So that's how close I think this group is going to be. But yeah, I have them in fourth because even though they have amazing fans and Scott McTominay and Andy Robertson, but outside of those two, there's not really much depth in the squad in terms of quality. And it's kind of the same for Switzerland, who I have in third place. Uh, just Xhaka and Shakiri in the midfield again probably their last tournament but yeah there's no real depth also in that squad and i think they're missing a top scorer up front but in second place i'm going with hungary very good solid squad uh, good coach and yeah they will have their fanatic support with them sponsored by orban so i'm hoping there will not be any issues with that because the black shirts unfortunately have a reputation and in first place i'm going with germany a lot of quality in that team you know there's a base of players that are experienced and they're going to have their last tournament like Toni Kroos, Mar Manuel Neuer, Gundogan even though as a host of the tournament they didn't really play much competitive games uh, i still think they should have enough quality to come in first in group b we have debutants albania during the group of death with croatia italy and spain so Group B, uh, the press is describing it as the group of death. Although, in my opinion, it's not really like that. I think debutants Albania will finish in fourth place, but they will not make it easy for their opponents. They have a good, solid team uh, and they fight for each other. But I think the battle will be between second and third place. I'm predicting Croatia to be in third place. However, I am pretty certain that they will be one of the best third place teams and will advance to the next round. But I wouldn't be surprised if they finish second because the team I have in second is Italy. I'm not convinced with them under Spalletti. He's a good coach, but I don't think he's suited for the Italian job. However, I'm giving them the edge over Croatia. And yeah, first place, it will be Spain. They have a young team. Uh, but it's a solid team. They finished group winners. Jamina Lamal is a you know, fun player to watch. But in the playoffs, I think that youth will cost them. But we'll have to see. In Group C, we see favorites England, uh, Slovenia, Serbia and Denmark. So Group C is probably the easiest one to predict. Uh, so let's just start with it. Slovenia, last place. They have Oblak and Goal and Sesko up front, but the rest of the team I don't really see have the quality to get out of the group. Denmark, I have them in first place. Also, overall, in the squad, the quality is not that great. And I think Serbia is a bit better. So I have them in second place. And in first place has to be England. Uh, the overall quality in that team is amazing. However, the downside is that they don't tend to take every game seriously especially their fans, and this will probably bite them in the end again. So I don't think it's coming home. Group D is the group where you and me both are interested in. It's the group with Holland and Poland, and we are joined by France and Austria. And now for the main group, Group D. I could make an entire video of an hour talking about how Holland will not win the championship in the next 20 years but i won't do it i'll keep it short i promise 
So in this group, it will be a very close battle for third place between Poland and Austria. Uh, I'm pretty sure the game between those two will decide it. But hopefully I'm going for a fourth place Austria. Uh, they have a fun playing team on the Ragnik, but they're missing Alaba. So I think that will make a huge difference. So I'll be going with Poland in third place, but yeah, it will be close. I can see Poland scoring maybe a point against Holland, but on the other side, I'm also not really convinced. It's very anti-football in my opinion. Like the team is like sitting very deep and it's just Lewandowski up front. There's like no service to him. So he's always like moved, falling deep, trying to get the ball. And the further away Lewandowski is from goal, the more difficult it becomes for him to score goals. So for second place, I'm going to be realistic. It's going to be Holland. And as promised, I will not go too deep into it. Uh, but there's a questionable team selection, especially on the left wing back position. And I think uh, Ronald Koeman is one of the reasons why it will not happen this year. Uh, he's a dinosaur, basically. Problem with Holland, uh, so yeah, that's why I'm going. The problem with Holland is that we rinse and repeat the national team coaches. It's just stuck with dinosaurs. All the young, talented coaches don't want to burn their hands on the national team. But our FA also doesn't want to try with a foreign coach for a couple of years. And outside the team is the press and the ex-players, the analytics, that make it their personal hobby to sabotage the team at any given moment. They try to create a scandal out of everything. For example, yesterday in the game against Canada, Memphis Depay played with a sweatband and the press is going crazy. Like they're making the entire scandal out of it. They're even confronting Kuman about it. Their newspapers are not selling well anymore. So they're trying to create scandals for the clicks and the views. And all that drama is one of the reasons why I normally try to stay away from national team games. I think we should still be good enough to get in second place because in first place, it's definitely going to be France. And my personal opinion, France is going to win the championship because that team is full of talents on every position. The Champ is also there for like several, many years now. So everyone knows their position, their role in the team. And Mbappe has his freedom finally. So I'm expecting him to be unleashed this tournament. That is Group D. Bit longer than I was hoping for. Apologies. <laughs> in Group B, we have Belgium, Ukraine, and Romania and Slovakia. So Group E is another easy one to predict. Uh, I think Belgium and Ukraine are too good to not finish in the top two. So in fourth place, I will go with Slovakia, just because I cannot really recall anyone uh, you know, standing out from that team. And the same goes for third place, uh, Romania. There's not really a big name in both teams. And the third place battle will be between them. But for second place, I will go for Ukraine. Uh, they have a very solid team, uh, young, talented. I'm expecting them to get a good support because there are a lot of Ukrainians now in Germany at the moment. I do think they are a bit hindered with their focus on the team play and it's limiting like the individual action that can win or break games, which the number one team has a lot of, which is Belgium. Uh, it's probably the last tournament of their golden generation. And if they can keep their locker room drama internally, uh, because there's always a two camp inside the Belgian team, the French speaking group and the Dutch speaking group. Yeah, if they can keep that internal, then I think they can go pretty far. And yeah, that was groupy. And in the final group, Group F, we find Portugal, Turkey, uh, the debutants, Georgia, and lastly, Czechia or Czech Republic. I know it's a duck, but just imagine it's a Galo de Barcelos. And finally, we've come to Group F, which in my opinion is a group of death for the black horses in the tournament. So in fourth place, I have the debutant, Georgia, outside of uh, for Australia. They don't really have big names in their team and it's their debut tournament. And I think based on experience, I think the Czech Republic is a bit ahead of them. And that's why I have them in third place because they're just a solid team playing a specific style of football and the coach is selecting players that fit that style. And in second place, 
I have my personal dark horse. It's Turkey. They're gonna have a massive home support because there are like 3 million or more Turkish people living in Germany. So every game will be a home game for them. But they also have a young technical team and they're always very motivated. But in the end, I don't think that will be enough to get Portugal from the first place. Uh, Portugal's team is so in depth with talent. Jorge Mendes is using it as a showroom for selling his players. And I think the only downside that could happen would be some Cristiano Ronaldo drama. But outside of that, I think Portugal and France are maybe the team with the most talents in their squad. And I'm expecting them to go pretty far. But yeah, that was it for my predictions. Let me know in the comments. What are your predictions? What are your predictions for the Holland-Poland game? And let me know if you want to see me do a prediction of the Fortuna Liga and extra class seasons. But yeah, as always, thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe, you know what to do. I will see each other soon. Bye-bye.